All right, on this episode of Bouts Talk and Bouts, we have a big card going at BTC8 Eliminator. It's happening on November the 30th, a flyweight tilt. It's going between Christina Ricker and Jasmine Jazdavizius. And I have Jasmine on the show. How's it going there, Jasmine? I'm very well. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Hopefully I pronounced the last name right there. Yeah, that was very well done. I have a hard-to-pronounce last name, too, so I got to do my due diligence with people I talk to, you know? Yeah. But yeah, this is a fun fight you have coming up here and everything like that. And it seems like you're keeping things, you know, pretty busy and everything like that. I'm wondering, though, like, are you a fighter who tends to, like, check out tape on your opponent? Is that something you more so allocate to people in your training camp and you focus on your own efforts? Like, where are you at on that end of things? Yeah, um, that I met my coaches. They're, they're the ones that watch the tape and watch the opponent and everything. And I just work on myself. Um they'll give me kind of like tips and tricks and stuff to watch out for or whatever. Um, I no, I, I just focus on what I'm doing. So what's the evaluation of Christina Ricker's skill set? Like what kind of things are you looking out for or kind of like expecting to go down late November there? Uh, my, my team has uh, given me the freedom to take the fight where I want. So if I want to keep it standing, I'm I'm able to do that or take her down. Um, it's they they're uh, they're allowing me to be free this time to and choose my own path. So it's awesome. Yeah, that must uh, instill a lot of confidence in you, I would imagine. But you're training with some great facilities, so I imagine the confidence comes from that too. Being at Niagara top top, top team and also you know Parabellum as well. I'm kind of wondering, like I see with like you know Tisha Guthrow and certain guys like that, but who are like the main people that you like you know train with and spar with and stuff like that? Um, yeah, that's exactly who you said. My my main training partner is Tisha. Um, I it's so awesome that I get to fight on the same card as him as well as uh, Matt Mark Antonio is one of my coaches. And um, so he, he works with me a, a little bit. Obviously, he's getting his own work in, so kind of a waste of time going with me, but he, he obviously helps me out. Um, but, yeah, I have my girl, Lindsay Garba, who's also on the same card, which is awesome. We, we'll um, go train at Parabellum together. And um, they're, my, they're my main, my, my go-to ones. Uh, in addition, I have some other people that I'll work with, but they're my main my main people. Yeah, and I spoke to Lindsay earlier, actually. She seemed very excited about having teammates on this same card, you know, like individuals working towards a common goal on the same night and everything like that. Do you share a similar sentiment? Like, do you get extra energy and motivation being with teammates that are working towards a common goal? Of course, yeah. It's so awesome, especially where we're all... Um, going to be tapering at the same time and like we have the same camp all the way through so it's really nice that we're all on the same page for everything then it'll be nice after celebrating with everyone of course yeah and i gotta wonder like it seems like things are a little more close to home this time out like it seems like you had a couple away games there a little bit sort of outside the immediate area what are your thoughts on competing on a card that's like niagara centric i can't wait to to fight in Niagara the venue is less than 15 minutes from my house and so finally all my friends and family are able to come um so I'm gonna have a huge support system so I'm looking forward to that as well as sleeping in my own bed like that's gonna be awesome and uh just having that that home hometown advantage that that the nice comfortable feel yeah, I'm wondering if you're uh, excited to be fighting in front of mom and dad. Is this the first time they're going to be seeing you fight live and in person? No, they've they've come to my fights before, but um, they, I I think they've only been able to come to one, possibly two. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to it. They're they're going to enjoy the show. I think <laughs> I hope. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you're going to put on a, a great show. It's going to be a good one. But speaking of, like, some of the Niagara-focused kind of stuff, it seems like you're getting in a lot of work with Brock Wrestling and everything like that. And it seems like Marty Calder is a pretty big influence, too. So can you speak to sort of, like, the wrestling culture with Brock and how that's informed your game as a mixed martial artist? Of course. So, um, yeah, I had the opportunity to work with all the talented athletes at Brock and 
obviously under Marty Cal- Marty Calder, which is nice. The um, the team is gearing up for Olympic trials, so everyone's going super hard. And um, just to to be in there and feel the atmosphere, it's it's absolutely insane. Everyone's just like peaking. There's the everything's all business in the room. There's no one goofing around, and um, everyone everyone's doing their best. It's it's such an honor to be able to work with them, and um, how how talented they are. Just the work ethic, the, that whole the wrestling grind. It's uh, it's an important part of obviously wrestling, but as well as fighting. And uh, so I'm hoping some of that rubs off on me, <laughs> just being in there enough. Yeah, well, I understand Marty Calder is the real BMF, so good to get that kind of training, eh? Oh yeah, he definitely is. He's he's a man's man, that's for sure. He uh, it's it's funny. He'll he'll he doesn't really believe in walks. He usually will say, I'm, I'm never gonna go for a walk if I'm gonna go out and be outside. I'm gonna go for a jog. I'm gonna go for a run. Why would I go for a walk? <laughs> he's just a true a, a true man's man. I love the mindset there. That's great. But, you know, talking about, you know, some of the grappling end of things with Brock wrestling. Also, I was noticing you were getting in some good work at that Parabellum Quintet event and you got that overtime victory via the EBI control time and everything like that. What was it like to participate in an event like Quintet? That was awesome. Um, yeah, the Parabellum crew, they put on a really good show. They had the, um, the grappling tournament this past weekend, which was also super super well well done organized everything um but yeah the the last quintet it was cool being on the elevated stage with the lights on i wish i got the submission still kind of haunts me but um it was a, a really good experience and uh, i'd love to be on the next one i mean if i don't have a fight or something like that yeah for sure i mean hopefully something like that can organically work out but I was also noticing you were part of the Dodge sports team I'm wondering what kind of benefits you've gotten from that sort of partnership because that seems like a pretty cool sort of representation group that a lot of other fighters are you know taking advantage of and getting benefits from yeah so um yeah Matt Dodge he's my manager he he's the one that hooks me up with all the fights and uh works with um my sponsors to uh to make sure that I'm able to continue training and not have to work so much um he's awesome as well as the little the the team all the other fighters that he has uh, aaron jeffries is one of them he's also fighting on the the btc card so it's like a little like dodge sports family that we have <laughs> yeah for sure i was noticing that representation too it seems like a great group for sure, but you mentioned training and stuff, and it seems like you're getting in some work at some great gyms, even outside Niagara Top Team and Parabellum. Like, I noticed you were at Syndicate MMA a little while ago, and you were getting in some great work there with Roxanne Modafferi and some other individuals there. What was that experience like, getting to go to Syndicate? Yeah, that was an amazing experience. Actually, um, Aaron Jeffries was down there initially, and then um, I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'll join you for a uh, for a little bit so i i ended up meeting him halfway through his his little stint there and um i had amazing training training there i had yeah exactly roxanne was there and uh jojo calderwood as well some other girls were there so it was nice having multiple girl partners um i don't have tons of girl partners here so it was nice to be able to work with them as well as they're so talented and um to to be able to um, like see how they train and see like what they're doing outside of training is um, it's really important to me as I like grow as a fighter to be able to uh, kind of see the the life that I can have one day. Yeah, I also understand Aaron Jeffrey thought he was going through a lost and found at one point. It turned out to be Joanne Calderwood's gear. Were you there when that happened? Did you have to kind of go to bat for Aaron there? No, I wasn't there, actually. I heard about that. That was the, the very first time that she had met him. She told when, when I got there, she told me the story. She never met him or anything, and she looked over, and this guy's wearing all her equipment. <laughs> uh. 
no, that's funny stuff for sure. I just thought to ask about that. But also, I noticed you were training with Random Marcos a little while ago. What was you know that experience like there? Another high level training partner for sure. Yeah, that was awesome. Um, her her wrestling coach and my coach they, they're uh, friends, and so they they came down and uh, had a bit of time here. And yeah, she was amazing to train with. Um, I had an awesome experience. Yeah, well, that's great to hear, and you're getting in work with, you know, a lot of great people, for sure, but I was also noticing it looks like you're campaigning for best hair in MMA, it looks like you're trying to beat out Elias Theodoru, but also you were in a commercial with Elias Theodoru for, you know, collies, those fake cauliflower ears, I'm curious, how did that all come about there? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, uh, so, Chris Prickett, actually, he's the one that owns the company that it's, uh, the ones that make the cauliflower ears, they have shirts as well. And so uh, they're making a commercial, and I just happened to be lucky enough to be chosen to be in it. What was the experience like? Was it a fun sort of experience, like something you'd do again if a future opportunity came up? Oh, yeah, for sure. It was a fun, fun evening that we had. I'd do it again. Yeah, it seemed like a fun time from what I could tell, but also it seems like you do a fair bit of helping out with the kids' classes at the gym, or at least you're known to do it now and again. What's uh, what's that like to be able to impart you know that certain knowledge to some of the kids on the come up there? Yeah, I help with the kids' classes. Um, it's so nice uh, to like see seeing them progress, especially the the first day they come in and they're they're pretty timid and. Sometimes, sometimes they're just wily, but yeah, they're they're pretty timid. And then after being there a couple classes, then they're just right into it and the, the swing of things. And uh, so it's it's so crazy actually seeing the progression. Especially I, I, you know, I didn't really notice it until actually coming back from Vegas because I was gone for two weeks. And then coming back and seeing them, it's like when you when you have a pet and you go away for a while and then you come back and they're a lot bigger than you remember. It was like the same thing with the kids. It's, some of them are taller, and uh, but yeah, just like seeing their kicks, they're like turning their hips over. It's it's such a rewarding experience. Yeah, and that seems to ex- extend to some other endeavors you've had in the past. Like, I understand you also worked at a youth homeless shelter more full-time. I understand you still do occasional shifts, but, you know, helping out the youth. Yeah, so I uh, was full-time at, it's called The Raft. So it's a youth homeless shelter for age 16 to 24 uh, in St. Catharines. If anyone ever has donations, clothes, dishes, all um, cutlery, anything, food, bring it there They'll, they're super appreciative especially around christmas time um but yeah so i i worked there for a while i'll, I'll still pick up the occasional shift every once in a while but it's hard with with training of course i'm i i can't take as many shifts as i would like to no i just thought that was cool though because when i went to niagara college i actually did a radio project talking about homelessness throughout the niagara region so i thought it was cool that you were involved in something like that yeah, yeah, it's, it's um, interesting for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely, but it seems like CBD is good for, like, recuperation after hard sparring, and it seems like, you know, certain other recuperative measures I presume you would use after hard training. What other kinds of recuperation? Like, are you doing, like, some chiropractor kind of stuff as well? Like, what else are you doing for the recovery? Yeah, I'll do, uh, like, saunas and ice baths um, as as well as uh, a girl on the wrestling team, she does massages for me. She's she's awesome. Um, actually, I was I today I was in Burlington and visited um, Dr. Gray at Endorphin, and uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll I use a Tim Tam every if I have like a nagging kind of muscle muscle pain. I'll do kind of everything. All good stuff for sure, but usually when I have fighters on the show too, I ask if there's like, you know, particular genres of music they like to train to. But I've also interviewed some fighters who either don't really care or they kind of prefer to train in relative silence, like replicate the conditions of fight night more so. Where are you at on that end of things? Are you usually grabbing the aux cord when you get in the gym? Um, not 
really like I don't really care too too much um but I mean if it was my like I, if I were to put on my playlist it'd be a lot of gangster rap in all oh, honesty. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely can't go wrong with that, but you've been great with your time. I'm curious if there's anything you'd like to add as a parting thought as we're kind of wrapping up here, though. Um, No, I just want to thank, obviously, BTC for putting me on the card, uh, my gym, Niagara Top Team, and Parabellum MMA, as well as my manager, Dodge Sports, and um, all my coaches and my sponsors. I can't thank you guys enough, and thank you very much for having me. It was great having you, and I think this is going to be a great fight on November 30th. People can check that out, BTC8 Eliminator. We've got a flyweight bout between Christina Ricker and Jasmine Jazz Divisius. And I appreciate all the time and insights. Best of luck with the remainder of your preparations, and enjoy the rest of your day, too. Thank you very much.